This broadcast of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by the Hoosier Lottery, proud sponsors of Ball State Basketball. Fun is good. Marsh Supermarkets. At Marsh, we value you. Sagamore Health. Caring, compassionate, and cost-effective. It's what your health care plan should be. Bank One. All of your financial needs wrapped up in one. Cardinal Varsity Club. Helping Ball State student-athletes excel both in and out of the classroom. And Ball State University. It's everything you need. From Worland Arena in Muncie, it's Mid-American Conference Women's Basketball. Today, the Ball State Cardinals 11-3 overall battle the Northern Illinois Huskies at 6-9. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome inside Worthen Arena. Along with Jenny Eckert, my name is Chris Taylor. What a year it's been for the Ball State women's basketball team. They are 11-3 overall, 3-0 in the Mid-American Conference, marking the best start in school history and the first time in 26 years the Cardinals have owned an 11-3 record, Jenny. Yeah, that's very impressive um, for them to come out with a record like that because, like you mentioned, it's been a long time since anyone's had this momentum going forward into conference play. One of the major reasons why the Cardinals are experiencing this success, it's the play of the super sophomore, Tamara Bowie. She has been a real key for Ball State this season. Tamara's done a really good job with getting the ball down low and putting it up and being able to score and finish a lot of baskets. She's doing a great job on the board and she's doing a lot with getting the team excited and with wanting to win and play. 18 points in the first half in the Cardinals' last game at Western Michigan on Wednesday. She finished the contest with 27 points and nine rebounds. Tamara Bowie leading the league in scoring at 19.6 per game, also second in rebounds. She's a big key for the Cardinals in their success this season. Another player to watch today for Ball State is junior Shayla Crook. And Jenny, as a former point guard, you know how important this position is. And Shayla's doing a nice job this year for Ball State. Shayla's doing a wonderful job this year. She's been a great team leader out on the court. She's getting the ball to the people that need to be able to score, and she's doing a good job with playing aggressive defense and getting a lot of steals out there. She's doing a great job this year being a team leader. Shayla Crook, just a junior, already second on Ball State's career list for career assists. She leads the MAC in assists, she leads the MAC in steals, and she ranks third nationally in assists per game. Shayla Crook will watch her play today for Ball State. Both teams riding impressive winning streaks. Ball State has won six in a row. Northern Illinois has won four in a row. Let's take a look at the bank one keys to the game first for the Northern Illinois Huskies, Jenny. The first key to the game for Northern Illinois will be to play aggressive defense. They need to put a lot of pressure on Ball State because Ball State's got a lot of people who are capable of scoring. The second key to the game would be to contain Tamara Bowie. We just talked about Tamara, how aggressive she is offensively as well as in defensively. And for the Ball State Cardinals looking for their seventh consecutive win and more impressive, a 6-0 record at home for the first time in school history, the keys for the Cardinals. The key for Ball State will be to first control the tempo of the game. They need to have a fast, up-paced tempo in order to get a lot of points off of the fast break. Northern Illinois, on the other hand, likes to slow it down and play a more contained offense. The second key to the game would be to handle Northern Illinois' pressure. Northern Illinois likes to get up in your face and play a great, aggressive man-to-man -man defense. If Ball State can contain that aggressiveness, then they should be able to be good on offense and be able to score. It's an early battle for first place in the Mid-American Conference West Division. The Ball State Cardinals 11-3 overall, 3-0 in the MAC. Northern Illinois 6-9, 2-0 in the MAC. One of those teams will get their first loss in conference play. We'll have it for you next. It's Ball State Women's Basketball on the Ball State Sports Network.
Live from Muncie, Indiana, it's Ball State women's basketball, one of the most surprising teams maybe in all of college women's basketball. And what a job Brenda Oldfield has done for the Ball State Cardinals. They are 11-3 overall, battling the Northern Illinois Huskies 6-9 today. Today's starting lineups are sponsored by Sagamore Health. Caring, compassionate, and cost-effective. It's what your health care plan should be. And we see in the starting lineup for Ball State, Tamara Bowie at the forward slot. She'll match up against a freshman for Northern Illinois, Lindsey Seacrest. And an interesting note for Ball State, Lori Kitts entered the starting lineup, Jenny, six games ago for Ball State. Since that time, they are 6-0. and Lori's done a great job with them being an shot there at the three-point line, and she's just been very instrumental with getting a lot of key baskets for them. Kristen Kanaki for Northern Illinois, the leading scorer for the Huskies, averaging 12 points a game. Michelle Johnson in the middle for the Huskies, a little over 10 points a game and nearly seven rebounds a contest. So it's a great game today on the Ball State Sports Network between two teams looking to remain undefeated in the Mid-American Conference. Along with Chris Taylor, along with Jenny Eckert, I'm Chris Taylor. We'll go down to the third member of our broadcast team. That is Reed Druck on the sidelines. Reed? Hey, guys. Ball State's leading scorer off the bench and freshman of the year candidate, Jonna Goff, has received an award before today's game. She's received the Mini Miss Basketball Player Award by Gary Donna of Hoosier Basketball Magazine. Now, this award goes to the top player in high school under six foot tall. Jonna Goff started at Mount Vernon High School, averaging nearly 24 points a game, and was runner-up for Miss Basketball. Thanks a lot, guys. Back to you. Thanks, Reed. And we talk about point production off the bench, and Jonna Goff is someone who we'll talk a lot about today for Ball State. You see on your screen the head coach of the Huskies, Kara Hammerly, in her third season. Owns a career record of 479 wins and just 274 losses. The Huskies coming off a 6-22 season last year, but they are much improved this year. It'll be a tough test for Ball State today. And on the other side, the reigning Mid-American Conference Coach of the Year. And what a job this lady has done. Brenda Oldfield in her second season at Ball State owns a career record of 27-19. and 19. She has the Cardinals off to their best start ever at 11-3, matching the very first team at Ball State in 1974-75, and they're undefeated in the conference. Brenda Oldfield has done a great job for the Cardinals. Brenda's done an excellent job in her two years here at Ball State University. She's brought a, a lot of enthusiasm back to the team, and that's one thing that you got to have to have a winning and successful program. And it goes farther than just Brenda Oldfield, her assistants, Tracy Rohr, Marsha Freeze, Brad Taylor, all the way down to the last player on that bench. I have the chance to work with this team every day, Jenny, and I can tell you that there is not one team that I enjoy working more with than Brenda Oldfield and her staff and these players. They are truly enjoyable to be around. Well, like you mentioned, I mean, everyone out there, coaches and players, as well as the managers, they've all put in a lot of time and a lot of dedication to this team and this program, and it's starting to pay off. You see the series key on your screen. Northern Illinois leads the series nine to five. Both teams won on their home floor last year. Ball State was an impressive winner here in Muncie. And then toward the end of the conference season last year in DeKalb, Illinois, it was an overtime loss for Ball State to the Huskies. So both teams winning on their home floor last year. If that holds true today, we should be in store for a Cardinal victory. But that's easily said and uh, has to be executed on the floor. It's a great matchup. The eyes of the Mid-American Conference may be on this game today as both teams are undefeated in conference play. And Tamara Bowie owns the opening tip. And quickly, you see why she leads the Mac in scoring. Yeah, that was uh, kind of a downfall there for Northern Illinois. They didn't really play the defense. I think they were a little shaken up there for a second. A turnover, a steal from Lori Kitts, and the Cardinals are off to the races in a hurry. Crook inside to Ryder. Up for two, but misses, and the rebound is controlled by Northern. Ball State wants to run. They want to push the ball up the floor. Northern Illinois, more of a half-court, grind-it-out type team. The number one offensive team in the league is Ball State, averaging 84 points per contest. Northern Illinois is second in the league in defense, so we've got a battle on our hands today. Yeah, we do, and we just saw a good offensive uh, road, uh, sequence there by Northern Illinois. They did a good job of working the ball and, and found an open shot and scored for two. Shayla Cook, Cook drives, finds Zerker, who misses, but Ryder is there. You cannot leave Lori Kitts open because she's one of the pure shooters on this team. Lori Kitts has got a great outside shot. She's just got the natural form and the talent to go along with it. The lotto scoreboard shows Ball State on top 4-2 early on in the first half. 
Glad you could join us today for Ball State Women's Basketball. Johnson has it. Down low to Youngblood who turns on Ryder and scores. Cook finds Kitts. Misses the three. Rebound off the front of the rim. Loose ball on the floor and the Huskies control. Well, right now we're seeing, like we mentioned before, with the keys of the game, it looks like the Huskies are trying to take their time, set up the offense, get everyone positioned so they can do what they just did right there, work it inside, turn around, and get a nice little bank shot for a, two points. Michelle Johnson, the 6'1 senior for the Huskies. Last year against Ball State, she had 29 points and 12 rebounds, so the Cardinals are keen on her defensively today. She got on the board the last time, and the Huskies control the rebound again. Cardinals like the little of the matchup zone defense. It's been very good to them throughout the season. They continue with that as Kanaki fires and misses. Johnson, though, another rebound and offensive putback. Johnson's doing a good job for Northern Illinois right now. It's working around the perimeter. Zerker loses it out of bounds, and it will go to Northern Illinois. Cardinals trail by four, eight to four early in the first half. It's the first of a double header with the Ball State men's basketball team today. And if you're watching this game, you certainly can make it out to see the end of this game and the men's team play coming up against Western Michigan at three o'clock right here in Worthen Arena. Right now, Ball State's putting a full court press on, on Northern Illinois, and I think they're doing this to, to create a lot of pressure on their ball handlers to see if they can't make some turnovers, and Ball State's getting their hands on a lot of balls early in the contest. Kanaki finds young blood ahead, and the Huskies break the pressure. There's Johnson again. She's an athletic post player who can hit that shot. Cardinals need to do a better job defensively on her, and I'm sure that's a focus right now for the coaching staff on the sidelines of Ball State. Shook splits the defense baseline for two. Shayla does a good job of penetrating inside and drawing a lot of defense around her, and there she was able to score. Lotto scoreboard, 8-6, Huskies lead. Johnson finds herself open again, down low to Youngblood, and they went to that play twice, and it's worked both times, Johnson to Youngblood. They're doing a good high-low um, transition on offense, and it's really, really working for them right now. One of the concerns was the aggressive man-to-man -man defense that Northern Illinois plays for Ball State. Cardinals really haven't seen this type of defense this year, and that was a concern for the coaching staff, how they would handle this defensive pressure. Well, right now, as we saw down here on the last rotation, Shayla tried to bring it inside and create something, and it just didn't work. Down low to Youngblood again. There's Lindsay Seacrest with the air ball. Amy Zerker, 110% every time she steps on the court, rips down that rebound, and the Cardinals have it offensively. Great pressure from the Huskies early on in the first half. Ball State needs to slow it up like Shayla's doing a good job controlling the court out there and just set a lot of screens and work the ball down low. Strong move by Tamara Bowie and she is fouled. I believe the foul was on number 35. Lindsay Seacrest, that's her first foul. First team foul for Northern. Tamara Bowie. We'll head to the free throw line as we see the strong move from the sophomore and then the heck from Seacrest. <laughs> Bowie shooting 82% from the free throw line. She's one of the league leaders. In fact, Tamara Bowie as a sophomore, really making a statement and a case for player of the year in the Mid-American Conference. We know it's still early, but she's in the top six or seven categories in seven categories in the Mid-American Conference statistically. It's a great season right now for Tamara Bowie. You know, she really is making a great case for herself because, like you mentioned, she's only a sophomore. So they're going to take recognition. They're going to look at her. They're going to watch her. And if she doesn't get, you know, a lot of votes this year, definitely next year she will. It's early on in the first half. Huskies on top of the Cardinals on the Ball State Sports Network.
Back inside Worthen Arena, the Huskies lead the Cardinals 10-8, 15-27 left in the first half. Cardinals getting a great start from Shayla Crook today. You see her taking a strong baseline, twisting for the score. Jenny and as a I know you admire the skills that Shayla Crook displays on the court. You know, she's a really small, smart ball player. She knows when to take the ball inside like you saw where she scored, and she also knows when to pull it out and find the open person and, you know, set them up in a position that they're able to score. Shayla Crook chasing the Ball State records for assists and steals held by my broadcast partner, Jenny Eckert. Yeah, you know, sooner or later, records are made to be broken, so if it's going to be by Shayla, then I'm pretty happy about that. Shayla Crook right now second in Ball State history for career assists. She's fourth in career steals, and she'll add to those numbers today as Amy Zerker is fouled by Northern. And Jeff number 22, Tim Bodie is her first. Bodie is whistled for the foul. It's her first for Hus the Northern Illinois Huskies and the second team foul for NIU. Ball State still looking to attack this man-to-man -man defense, and one way to do it is Shayla Crook who misses, but rebounded by Ryder, up and in for two. Ryder brings a good punch here to the Ball State women's program. You know, being a freshman, getting as much experience as she is this year, and she's got the height to be able to be effective inside, but she's also got a nice outside shot that we saw earlier here in the first part of the game where she took a, a three-pointer. Jessica Ryder ranks seventh in the Mid-American Conference with 7.2 rebounds per game. You see a big reason why as she attacked the offensive glass for the score and follows with the free throw. Cardinal substitution tomorrow, Bowie returns. Bowie back into the Ball State lineup. Also checking in for Ball State on that last play was 6'3 junior college transfer, Amy Northern Fuller, and also the freshman, Jonna Goff, is in the lineup for Ball State. Now that's one thing Ball State has is a very deep bench that they can go to and get quality minutes from their bench and then get their starters back in um, to the game with fresh legs. On the other side of the court, Northern Illinois really only goes three players deep, really an eight-person rotation for the Huskies, so that could come into play later, especially if Ball State continues to press and use the up-tempo format that they want to use. Exactly. Knocked away, Crook ahead, and there's Jonna Goff. Count it and put her on the line. The freshman with two. And you notice on the floor how every other Ball State player is excited. They're enthused whenever another player scores. You see the great move from Jonna Goff using the body with the foul. She did a good job of protecting the ball and going up and using her body to protect the ball and draw the foul as well as and finish the shot. And like you mentioned before, there's a lot of enthusiasm out on the court this year um, from the Ball State players, and that's really going to help them, you know, continue to grow and, and become the team that they need to, to to be a contender in the conference. The mini miss basketball, as Reed Druck talked about before, as the Cardinals turn it over or get the turnover. Amy four for two, and she is fouled. And look at the excitement on the floor for the Cardinals. You know, the score doesn't really reflect it right now. It's only 16 to 10, but Ball State is really dominating out there as far as in being aggressive defensively with their press, getting the ball, and then taking it strong to the hole, drawing a foul as well as in finishing the shot. Here's the replay, the good move from Fuller. And the foul, it's good to see Amy Fuller breaking a little bit of a slump over the last couple of games. Scores a great way to get your confidence back on a three-point play, potentially. Definitely. You know, when you go out there and you're trying really hard and you're, you're able to finish the shot and get the free throw, and there she finishes the free throw, you know, you got a three-point play, and that's, that's great for your enthusiasm. Last year, Ball State had no player on their roster taller than 5'11". This year with 6'3", Amy Fuller, 6'2", Jessica Knoll, a freshman, 6'3", Jessica Ryder, the height is there for Ball State, and that really allows that inside-outside game that's so important in college basketball. You know, it really does, and it really helps Tamara Bowie, you know, extend her level of play because it, all the pressure is going to be taken off of her because they're going to have other tall people to contend with. And it's also going to help when they go up against taller um, com competitors like Northern Illinois here has a couple girls who are six foot. The pass ahead from Bowie to Crook. Driving strong, she misses. And the rebound will head in favor of the Huskies. The well, Ball State's definitely um, keeping an up-tempo game here. You saw that with getting the rebound, getting it out to Shayla, and she's just driving into the basket. Cardinals on a bit of a run. 
taking a 10-9 deficit to a 17-10 lead here in the first half. Defensive pressure from the Cardinals forced the turnover. Well, you notice that they switched up from a zone earlier. Now they're playing an aggressive man-to-man, -man, and I think it's kind of thrown Northern Illinois, Northern Illinois off with their offensive tempo. Interchangeable at the guard slots, the dynamic duo, Goff and Crook, but Goff turns it over this time, and Seacrest will make them pay. Seacrest is third on the team for the Huskies, just over 10 points a game. Cardinals continue to work against the Husky defense, and Shayla Crook again, baseline for two. Shayla's done a good job of getting past her defender, and then no one's coming over to help pick her up, and she's finishing strong to the bucket. The outside shot from Smith. Rattles off the rim, and the rebound controlled by Ball State. And the Cardinals again, quickly up the floor. They're looking down low to Fuller. Knocked away on the pass, and Seacrest has the steal for the Huskies. Northern Illinois has done a good job of playing aggressive man-to-man, -man, and they're overplaying the people, and that's why Shayla had a hard time trying to find an open person, and Northern got the steal. Johnson, there's the play again from Johnson to Youngblood. And it works for the third time. 1914 Ball State on top on the Lotto scoreboard. Nearing the 12 minute mark in the first half. Kanaki with the rebound. Good pass to Seacrest, but she fires the air ball. And now Ball State quickly back the other way. You see the philosophy of the Cardinals today run the floor. And I tell you what, Thank I you. think that the bench is going to be a big factor, like we mentioned before, because both teams are pushing the ball up and back and forth up and down the court, and Northern Illinois is going to get tired. <laughs> Timeout on the floor. The Cardinals hold a five-point lead, 19-14, on the Ball State Sports Network. This broadcast of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by the Hoosier Lottery, proud sponsors of Ball State Basketball. Fun is good. Marsh Supermarkets. At Marsh, we value you. And by Sagamore Health Network. Caring, compassionate, and cost-effective. It's what your health care plan should be. It's an early battle for first place in the Mid-American Conference West Division. And Jenny Eckert, you see the move again from Shayla Crook. Shayla's just done a great job of reading the defense. They're overplaying her. So she's taking that one step, beating them, getting to the basket, and being able to score an easy layup. 19-14 is the score. 11.53 left in the first half. Ball State on top of Northern Illinois. Let's check in with Reed Druck on the sidelines. Reed. Coach Brenda Oldfield just told her troops that the next foul that Northern Illinois commits, they will be in the bonus. So she wants Tamara Bowie and the rest of the players to take it strong down underneath the hoop. Back to you guys. Thanks, Reed. Foul situation, Northern Illinois with six team fouls. The Cardinals have yet to commit a foul in the first half. And there's a strong move from Bowie. And she gets the foul. Yeah, she did get the foul. She took it strong to the bucket, and I think they, Northern Illinois was a little taken by that because it's kind of a late whistle. The foul was called on Michelle Johnson. 
And as a head coach, you like to see the execution of what you talked about in the timeout, and Bowie did just that, as Reed reported. Yes, she did. And you know, like we mentioned before, she's shooting 82% from the line, and that makes her fourth in the MAC. And you know, that's a good stat to have as far as in being a big inside player because she's going to get hammered an awful lot. And for her to come through and you know have a high stat as far as in free throw percentage, that's great. Earlier this season, Tamara Bowie made 13 free throws and 14 tries in a Cardinals dominating win at Illinois Chicago. Today, from the free throw line, Bowie is now five for five. There's Adams, misses. Lori Kitts coming off a seven rebound performance at Western Michigan on Wednesday, grabs the rebound. And again, the Cardinals are off, and there's Kitts. A little short on both shots today from three-point range. She just needs to find her rhythm out there. You know, she's getting the ball, she's getting good looks at the basket, but she's just not getting that extra ump that she needs. 21-14, Ball State on top of Northern Illinois. It looks like Ball State has gone back to kind of a lax man-to-man. -man. It's a little bit of a zone, but they're also picking up a little bit on man-to-man -man once they get the ball. Down to five on the shot clock. Kanaki tries, offensive rebound, and the Huskies get a fresh 30 to work with. And there's Ball State's first foul, and it took them close to 10 minutes to get it. Foul was whistled on Jessica Ryder, number 32 for the Cardinals, the freshman center who has started. You see, you see the foul situation, situation seven to one in favor of Northern Illinois or in favor of Ball State, depending on your perspective. Well, and I think you're gonna see a lot of fouls going towards Northern Illinois because they play such an aggressive man-to-man -man defense and they're gonna be in your face. And so they're gonna get probably a little bit more fouls called towards them. But, you know, we can't take away from Ball State because they're being aggressive too on defense. And you can see that because they've gotten a lot of steals and gone down and converted those into some points. The officials have a meeting near the free throw lane and determined that it was last touched by Northern Illinois, so Ball State has possession with the seven point lead, 21-14. Bowie again, this time called for an extra step. Ball State's fifth turnover here in the first half. Good crowd on hand today to see this doubleheader with the men's and women's team. And this women's team deserves the support, 11 and three. A lot of people talking about Ball State women's basketball throughout the community. And there are many here today to see them firsthand. Another foul on the Cardinals. Or on no, Northern I think Illinois, Mystique Adams is whistled for the foul. Yeah, she went up strong with her shot and, and it missed and she was just trying to be aggressive and get the ball back, but unfortunately she kind of jumped over someone's back in the process. And that will send the Cardinals to the free throw line. Lori Kitts shooting 79% from the charity stripe. As a team, Ball State shooting 73%. And for Ball State to be a contender in the conference, that's one thing they're going to need to do is, as a team, be able to put those free throws through the, the goal there and score some points because a lot of games are won at the free throw line. Kitts hits both. Pushes the Cardinal lead to 23-14 on the lotto scoreboard. Trapping defense from the Cardinals, but the Huskies are able to break and push the ball ahead. Smith has it on the left side. Looks inside to Youngblood. Thought about the shot, now uses the dribble. Count it and put her on the line. A good aggressive move from Youngblood. I think one thing that uh, the Ball State team's gonna have to work on, if not here at the last part of this half, definitely in the second half, is stopping that high-low combination for Northern Illinois. They're being very effective with either hitting the low post or dribble penetrating in and getting the foul. Youngblood to the free throw line. 73% shooter. So the three-point play works for the Huskies. Help! 
Zerker looks down low for Jessica Ryder and a good move from the freshman. That was a nice inside pass to Ryder and she did a good job of getting the ball and going strong to the hole. Could have been called a travel, but the Cardinals come up with it anyway as Crook gets a steal. Ryder can hit the three-pointer as well, and she does. Over 50% from the four, shooting over 50% from the, the three-point line. Jessica Ryder's a factor inside and outside. And that's what makes her such a strong presence out there for Ball State. Being a freshman, she's gonna do nothing but gain experience, but she helps with the team because she can either score effect effectively inside or outside. Sometimes rare to see a 6-2 post player able to shoot the three, but Ryder does it very effectively. Yes, she does. Kanaki had her foot on the line for two. 28-19 now, Ball State on top. Zerker drives but misses, and Bowie is there for two more. And once again, we saw the quick tempo of Ball State that got us down the court. We missed the first shot, but Northern Illinois wasn't down there yet to get that rebounding position, and Tamara had an easy rebound and could go up for two. Timeout on the floor called by Coach Carol Hammerly. She sees her team start to get down 30-19 now as Ball State is on an impressive run. And the Cardinals are one of those teams that can go on runs because they have so many offensive weapons. You know, they sure do, Chris. You know, like we talked before, their bench is very much an instrumental part of this team because once they come in, they're not really hurting anything offensively. They still have scores out there on the floor. And while they're out there giving 110 percent, it's allowing the starters to, you know, get those fresh legs and come out. And Northern Illinois, you know, really has to be on top of their game at all times because they have such depth at Ball State's bench. The Cardinals turned an early deficit now into a 30-19 lead. And we talked about the impressive start for the Ball State women's basketball team. They improved to 11-3 overall with a 94-68 win at Western Michigan on Wednesday, marking the second best record in school history after 14 games. The very first team in school history had that record. And earlier today, we talked with Brenda Oldfield about her team's impressive start. We're really excited. I mean, to be 11 and three at this point, and three and zero in the conference, uh, you know, in first place of the Western Division, can't say enough. And especially the fact that we're starting one junior, three sophomores, and a freshman. And you know, this young ball club has really come together. And you know, it just says a lot being able to go into your second year, and, and the kids understand your system a lot better. They understand you as a coaching staff. The players understand. So we're just excited to be where we're at and enjoying every moment. Without question, the Cardinals off to a great start. Brenda Oldfield is a major reason why, and as a former alum of this program, you know what she's done to improve those relationships, and, and the alums are really starting to back this program now. You know, they really are, Chris. Um, in the past, you know, the school spirit was still there because, of course, you're an alum to Ball State, but when you have a coach who comes in who brings the enthusiasm, who starts to get a winning program here, it does nothing but make the alumni come back and really want to support the school and the program. It's an impressive turnaround because just six times in school history have the Cardinals had a winning season. Brenda Oldfield had one of those in her first year, 16 and 13 as a, as a first year head coach. Obviously they're on track to have that again this year at 11 and three, Rem remembering there are still a lot of games left to play. However, what she's done in a year and a half is truly remarkable and is really getting the attention of many people across the nation. You know, it has, she's gained a lot of respect from a lot of people. Um, and, you know, with having such a good mark, that's great, but they have nothing, you know, but to move forward. They got to use this as a foundation and really, you know, try to build the momentum and continue the success. Three second call on the Huskies, so another turnover for Northern Illinois. That's their ninth here in the first half. And Ball State will look to build on their 30 to 19 lead here in the first stanza. Cardinals try to execute the offense, though to Fuller. Kicked out of bounds by Michelle Johnson. And that brings us to our official timeout on the floor. Ball State leads Northern Illinois 30 to 19 on the Ball State Sports Network.
This portion of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by Outfitter, offering custom screen printing and embroidery, showcasing businesses, organizations, clubs, and special events. Outfitter, we print what you wear. You wear what we print. You see the mini Miss Basketball Award that was presented to Jonna Goff before the game today by Hoosier Basketball Magazine. And Jonna Goff, the Cardinals' leading scorer off the bench. She's second on the team, averaging 13.6 points per game. She's a little fire plug, and she's a major reason why the Cardinals are experiencing success this season. You know, that's one thing Ball State needs is another Shayla Crook out there, and that's what Jonna Goff, you know, brings to this club. When Shayla gets in some trouble, Jonna can come in and take over those responsibilities. Jonna Goff has scored in double figures in the last six games and in 11 of Ball State's 14 games this season, including a career-high 34 points in the MAC opener against Marshall. And in that game in the first half, Jonna Goff accounted for 16 of BSU's first 18 points. She can light it up in a hurry, but she also plays such great defense as well. She is a complete package for the Cardinals. You know, and it's really great as a freshman that she can come in and make such an impact because a lot of times, sometimes a transition from high school to college ball is a little bit difficult for people. But it sounds like, you know, John is having no problem whatsoever with making that transition. A leading candidate for Mac Freshman of the Year if she continues on this pace. As the Huskies look to cut into the Cardinal lead, there's Youngblood again. This time, though, it's blocked, I believe, by Amy Four. And the Cardinals have it. Goff, right around Seacrest to the basket, but she is fouled. Ball State's doing a good job of taking advantage of that man-to-man -man pressure by getting one step on their defensive player and going strong to the basket. Jonna Goff with one and one for the Cardinals. There you can see um, Jonah, she did a good job of driving by her defensive player and going up strong and drawing the foul. We mentioned those 34 points from Jonah against Marshall in the MAC opener. Where does that rank in Ball State history, you may wonder? It's the fourth highest ever scored by a Ball State women's basketball player and the most by a Ball State freshman. Char Thompson holds the Ball State record for 39 points in a game. And an interesting note, she was in attendance at the game against Marshall when Jonna had her 34. She must have brought her some good luck. 32-19 on the Lotto scoreboard. Ball State on top of the Huskies. Cardinals has, have picked it up on the defensive end. Another miss by Johnson and a rebound by Fuller. Zerker nearly loses it, controls it. Now Crook inside to Bowie. It's knocked away by the Huskies. Thirty-two nineteen, just under seven minutes to play. The Huskies will have a substitution as number 30. Jessica Shawtuck. She enters the lineup for the Huskies. Bringing some height to the Northern Illinois sidelines as Shayla Crook drains the three. And I sense on the Northern Illinois sidelines that Carol Hammerly feels that this game may be slipping away just a bit as the Cardinals are on an impressive run, but more importantly, they've turned up it on the defensive end. You know, that's one thing that they have done. They've been putting a lot of pressure on Northern Illinois, and Northern Illinois right now is kind of trying, or starting to become unraveled, and they're turning the ball over a little bit more, and they're not getting a lot of scoring. Right now, Ball State's got 12 points on turnovers, and Northern Illinois has only um, gotten four. The Cardinals look to continue as you see the turnovers on your screen. Bowie strong against Shattuck. Zerker is there. Great move by the sophomore to draw the foul. Tamar Tamara tried to go up on her shot and draw the foul on the 6'4 um, sophomore who came in for Northern Illinois, but she just didn't have enough. But Zerker went in strong and, and got more off of the body, and that's what actually created the foul there. Amy Zerker is one of those players, we've talked about her before, but she does all those little things that you have to have to be successful. The heart and soul, the emotional leader of this team, 
the rebounds, the loose balls, the hustle plays. If there's one person who epitomizes that kind of player, it's Amy Zerker. You see the score on the Powerball scoreboard. Ball State on top, 37-19. Closing in on halftime. And another turnover. Monique right. Davis turns it over. Good pressure from the Cardinals. Yeah, right now it looks like Northern Illinois just doesn't have a go-to person out there on the court who wants to take the ball and and uh, you know, take the shot for them. They're real hesitant with their offense, and Ball State's done a good job of keeping pressure on them. The Cardinals, who opened the second half at Western Michigan with a 21-2 run to erase a four-point deficit and win that game 94-68. Right now, Ball State is experiencing a 27-10 run here in the first half, and they have pushed their lead to 37-19. Works on Smith. Back to Goff. And the freshman is called for taking an extra step. Northern Illinois riding a four game winning streak into today's game. The Cardinals have won six in a row. Good look from Smith down low to Kanaki, who couldn't finish. But battles for the offensive board. Jump ball is called. Good effort from Fuller to create the jump ball situation. But Northern Illinois will retain possession. One thing that Ball State needs to do right now is keep the intensity up. It seems like things have kind of slowed down a little bit. And they need to bring their intensity level back up and really put more pressure on Northern Illinois. Johnson works on Fuller for two. That is Michelle Johnson's eighth point of the first half. Huskies picked it up on the defensive end again. This time, Kanaki will go coast to coast and score. You may see Coach Oldfield call a timeout here in a few minutes. Looked as if she was signaling for one, but actually just giving instructions to Shayla Crook. Yeah. Crook goes low and finds Fuller, who misses. And an offensive rebounding foul on the Cardinals. Shayla's doing a great job right now of reading the defense because they're playing such aggressive man-to-man -man on her that she's driving in, and if they do cut off her penetration, she's looking for that open person, which is you know what she found with Fuller. She just wasn't able to uh, connect on the, the short little shot she had. Foul was whistled on Amy Zerker. That's her first foul. So the Huskies looking to cut in the Ball State lead. 37-23, just under, or approaching the four-minute mark in the first half. Another turnover for the Huskies. Northern Illinois is really using that high-low post, and Ball State just needs to make sure they keep defending the way they are or slide in front of them and cut that little short pass off. Crook will work on Kanaki. Ball is stripped away from Zerker, and the Huskies are on the break again. Kanaki for two more. And Kristen Kanaki now has six points. And it's back to a 37-25 lead on the Powerball scoreboard. Cardinals still on top, just under four minutes to play. Zerker back to Crook. And a three-second violation on the Cardinals. And Brenda Oldfield cannot wait for this official's timeout to talk to her team. Timeout on the floor, Ball State 37, Northern Illinois 25 on the Ball State Sports Network.
This broadcast of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by Bank One. All of your financial needs wrapped up in one. Cardinal Varsity Club, helping Ball State student athletes excel both in and out of the classroom. And by Ball State University. It's everything you need. Ball State leads Northern, Northern Illinois 37-25 in the first half in women's basketball action. And my partner Jenny Eckert has had a chance to look at some first half stats and sees a key why the Cardinals may be leading. Well, right now, both teams are shooting 50% from the field, but the one big key is Ball State has been to the free throw line 13 times compared to Northern Illinois' one, and Ball State is connected on all 13 tries. So there's a 12-point difference, and that's where it comes into play right there, Chris. Let's check in with Reed Druck on the sidelines. Guys, Coach Oldfield is very upset with her team right now that they've let Northern Illinois back into the game, so look for them out of this timeout to be fired up and ready to go. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Reed. Cardinals go back to that full-court pressure trying to force some Husky turnovers. Nearly had one, but they break it. There's Johnson, stripped from Shayla Crook, but Northern has it. The three misses. Johnson again with the rebound and misses. Another chance for Northern Illinois, but Bowie pulls down the defensive rebound. So the Cardinals survive there. Bowie misses, and Northern rebounds. Kanaki. And just like that, the Cardinals get it back. Amy Fuller calling for the ball. Crook finds her, but no good, as Shattuck gets the rebound for the Huskies. Both teams right now are really pushing the ball, but they're really not settling down and getting a good shot. They're kind of sporadic right now on both ends of the court. Johnson guarded by Fuller, spins, and she is fouled by Amy Fuller. That'll send Michelle Johnson to the free throw line where Johnson is shooting just 65% this year from the charity stripe. This will be the second time that Northern's been to the free throw line this half. Ball State had an 18 point lead at 37-19. But with that free throw, the Huskies have scored the last seven points in the game. And Michelle's been the driving offensive force for Northern Illinois right now. She's scored nine points. Youngblood has the other nine points, and that's because they've been doing that high-low transition all, um, all day so far. Johnson hits both free throws, so it's now an 8-0 run from Northern Illinois. 37-27, again, it was an 18-point lead at one point just about two minutes ago for Ball State at 37-19. But now the Huskies have cut that lead to 10, 37-27. Make sure you don't miss any of the exciting action of Ball State basketball. Get your tickets for all the men's and women's home basketball games by calling the Ball State Athletic Ticket Office at 765-285-1474. You can also charge by phone at any Ticketmaster outlet or call 1-888-BSU-TICKET. Several more men's and women's games throughout the season. The women's team on home, home again on Wednesday against Ohio. The Ball State men's basketball team home after today's game with Western Michigan, and then we'll also be back in action on Monday here against the Northern Illinois men's team. So several basketball games in the next three or four days for Ball State fans. Jessica Knoll, the freshman from Wisconsin, has entered the lineup for Ball State. She wears number five as the shot from Crook doesn't go. And the Huskies looking to pull this thing back to single digits. Bowie down low, and she is fouled over the back by Shattuck. Tamara did a good job of getting position on uh, Shattuck because there she's a little out, you know, out height, and she did a good job of getting her body in front of her and keeping her on her back. That'll send Tamara Bowie back to the free throw line where she has not missed yet today. Looking for double figure points from Bowie if she connects on both of these free throws. The first is good. Misses the second, the rebound by Johnson. 
And there is a foul on the play against number five, Jessica Knoll. Jessica Knoll with the foul. And the announcer the jinx the worked on Tamara <laughs> Bowie, so I guess we'll take credit for that. Way to go, Chris. Unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sure she'll remind me of that when she watches this tape. Nice way to cut off the pass, and the Cardinals have it. Noel finds Crook, and Shayla's quickly up the floor. There's a foul on Michelle Johnson on Northern Illinois. And let's see, I believe this could be an interesting development in the game. Second foul on Michelle Johnson. The leading scorer for the Huskies has picked up two here in the first half as Bowie hits the free throw. Bowie back at the free throw line. You see it on your screen, leads the MAC in several categories and ranks in seven of the MAC stats. An interesting note in this game, the Cardinals' last field goal was that three-pointer from Shayla Crook about the 6.48 mark in the first half. So they've went over five minutes without a field goal. But yet, from the free throw line, they've able to keep their lead at double figures. And it's not that they haven't been taking outside shots, they really have. And I don't know if it's because they've lost their touch or if it's just because Northern Illinois has, you know, stepped up their defensive pressure, which they have done here. And that's why you saw Johnson commit the foul on Bowie the last session. Voting at the free throw line, she misses. The offensive putback from Shattuck is there. She just used her height advantage on Tamara and just grabbed it out of her hands and put it right back up for an easy put. Good penetrating pitch from Tamara Bowie to find Lori Ketz who hits the two. 42-29, Ball State on top. Final 40 seconds on the Powerball scoreboard. Shattuck finds herself open and she hits from the top of the key. Shattuck off the bench now, that's four points for her and the three or four rebounds. She's really picking up her uh, tempo out there with uh, Johnson being on the floor, on the bench. She's really trying to make more of an offensive threat out there on the floor. Ball State looking for the last shot here in the first half. Crook being guarded by Kanaki. Good defense by all the Huskies and that forces Shayla Crook to call a timeout with seven seconds left on the clock. There you saw how Northern Illinois likes to play that aggressive in-your-face man-to-man defense where they created, you know, no opportunity for Shayla to even get the ball to one of her teammates. Seven seconds left in the first half. Ball State 42, Northern Illinois 31. Glad you could join us today for Ball State women's basketball. I want to remind you our next telecast on the Ball State Sports Network will be this Wednesday, January 17th, when the Ball State men's basketball team Travels to Toledo, Ohio to face the Rockets in a Mid-American Conference shootout. Catch all the action live from Savage Hall right here on the Ball State Sports Network, 7 o'clock. A couple of other women's scores of note at the half. It is Bowling Green leading Toledo, 27-24, and Marshall over Western Michigan at halftime, 33-22. So we'll keep our eye on those other developments around Mid-American Conference women's basketball. Bowie inside, blocked by Shattuck. Noel has it, but she steps out of bounds. Shattuck is really making a presence known out there on the floor um, with her 6'4", tall, skinny frame. Just a sophomore from Wisconsin at 6'4". The shot doesn't go at the buzzer, and so the first half ends. 42-31. All in all, not a bad performance from the Cardinals in the first half. You look at the stats, very impressive that they made it to the free throw line 17 times and they made 16 of those, and that's really the difference in the game. We'll have more of the halftime stats, and we'll recap the first half a little bit later. Right now, though, we'll go to break. It's Ball State on top of Northern Illinois, 42-31, on the Ball State Sports Network.
This portion of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by Four Star Charter. Whether it's traveling the state or touring the nation for business or pleasure, enjoy the comfort and experience that only Four Star Charter can provide. Four Star Charter, 317 North Brady in Muncie. It's halftime at Worthen Arena. The Ball State women's basketball team on top of Northern Illinois, 42-31, behind the 11 first half points of sophomore Tamara Bowie. Welcome back inside Worthen Arena, along with Jenny Eckert. I'm Chris Taylor. It was a good effort from the Cardinals in the first half. They trailed 10-9 at one point, but used a 27-10 run to build their biggest lead of the first half at 37-19, an 18-point advantage for the Cardinals in the first half. But we know what happened toward the end of the first half. Yeah, towards the end of the first half, they kind of went on a dry spell where they didn't even get um, a field goal in the last six minutes of the first half. They got to the free throw line, but they couldn't connect on an outside shot. We talked about the aggressive man-to-man -man defense of Northern Illinois, and for most of the first half, it did cause problems for the Cardinals. Northern Illinois did a good job of putting that man-to-man -man defense on them, and they were scrappy, they were reaching in, they were getting a lot of loose balls, and they did a good job of putting that pressure on them and making Ball State turn the ball over a little bit. Michelle Johnson for Northern Illinois finished the first half with 10 points. Tamara as we mentioned for Ball State, 11 points, really the top two players for each team, and they were helping their team in the first half. Both of those girls did a good job for each of their respective teams, and I think the one big thing was Tamara having such a great, uh, doing a great job at the free throw line when she got put to the line. Obviously, the Cardinals had a bit of a drought to end the first half, and that's something that the coaches will look to correct at halftime for the second half. Just talk about mentally, although you didn't score, you still have a lead at halftime. We'll have more of that when we come back after this on the Ball State Sports Network. Despite suffering through six minutes without a field goal to end the first half, the Ball State Cardinals still lead Northern Illinois 42-31 at halftime. Let's head down to the third member of our team, Reed Druck, with the rest of our halftime festivities. Reed? I'm Reed Druck here with Ball State's Athletic Director Andy Seeger. And Andy, first of all, we have to talk about this Ball State team and the job that Coach Brenda Oldfield has done with it. Oh, she's done a great job. and She's very demanding as a coach, and we think we need that for our program. We've got some really talented players and we're, we're really excited about women's basketball. It's, uh, it, they're fun to watch. We got a double header here today at University Arena, excuse me, Johnny Worthen Arena. The men play after this. Talk about the exposure that that gives to the Muncie area to watch this bas these two basketball teams play. Well, we decided to do it this time because time followed by the men's and so we had a great chance for a really good crowd and we think it's important for people to understand what we're all about right now with our women's program. We think uh, by exposing the program today that uh, we hope a lot of these fans will come back and spread the word about what a great program the women's basketball has right now. we got a lot of construction going on right now at Ball State University, including out at the football facility. Could you talk a little bit more about the building that's being built out there at the football stadium? That's a great project. And as you know, we've been trying to get this done for a number of years. And what I, I think it's important for people to understand that while that's a wonderful building, that's the only the first part of the continued expansion at the stadium. And that uh, next process is going to be the design and uh, expansion in the press box area and then the seats to 30,000. So it's a fun time for us. Thanks a lot for joining us. Back to you, Chris. 
Thanks, Reed. Halftime continues. It's Ball State 42, Northern Illinois 31. We talked about that construction on campus, and we'll have a chance to take a closer look at some of that new construction on the Ball State campus. One of the most visible signs of change on a college campus is construction and renovation of campus buildings. Ball State is certainly no stranger to campus construction. In fact, there is well over $100 million in campus construction projects, either in progress, on the drawing board, or in the planning. With all of that going on, you'd think the end might be in sight. Well, actually, construction's a never-ending process. Kevin Kenyon is Associate Vice President for Facilities Planning and Management. Oversight of all of the campus projects is his responsibility. He says the next several years will see a lot of change. Over the next several years, we will be very, very busy, and uh, it will transform the Ball State University campus like, uh, like you can't imagine at this point. The actual transformation will take some three to five years to complete, focusing on five major projects. The football training facility, the art and journalism building, Schaefer Tower, the music instructional building, and the redesign and reconstruction of McKinley and University Avenues. It will be somewhat disruptive. There will be dirt and dust and noise, but the end result will be worth it. The largest structure under construction is the 204,000 square foot art and journalism building, approximately the size of Bracken Library. This state-of-the-art facility will not only house the necessary classroom and laboratory space for both academic departments, it will also be home to a large food court, a Barnes & Noble bookstore, and a Starbucks coffee shop. But it is going to be a, a, a fantastic building. It will certainly be the premier art and journalism uh, facilities in the Midwest. The art and journalism building will sit along McKinley Avenue, which will soon undergo its own transformation. McKinley will become as much a centerpiece of the campus as is the original quad. Beautifully landscaped pedestrian medians and the spectacular 150-foot Schaefer Bell Tower will tell visitors this is no ordinary college campus. Art and journalism will sit next to the Ball Communications Building, and next to that, a new student center. All three buildings will be linked, providing easy access for students and faculty. It probably marks the, uh, the beginning of a change in a part of Ball State's campus from individual buildings to uh, linked buildings which may have a little bit more of an urban feeling to them. Well I think it also encourages people to uh, to go into those buildings uh, and to use those buildings just for passage to other areas of campus which will then encourage use of the uh, uh, you know the dining facilities that are in the uh, new art and journalism building, the uh, facilities that will be in the new uh, uh, student center, the, the bookstore which is in the art and journalism building so that will help hopefully uh, those areas to uh, get a little more people uh, interacting with those spaces. The face of Ball State is changing and improving each day. And with new projects already being planned, there's little end in sight. If you'd like to learn more about Ball State University, join us on our website at bsu.edu. For Ball State University, I'm Terry Witt Bailey. The Ball State women's basketball team looking to remain undefeated in the West Division. They lead the Huskies of Northern Illinois at halftime, 42-31. We'll be back with more after this on the Ball State Sports Network.
There were three ties and four lead changes in the first half, and at halftime, Ball State's on top of Northern Illinois, 42-31. Let's take a look at those Bank One halftime stats. Bank One, all of your financial needs wrapped up in two one. And you see the field goal percentage, Jenny, very even, really, between both teams. And again, the difference is the free throw line. You know, you're absolutely right, Chris. You can see where both teams are shooting in the 40 to, or 45 percent range, but it's been the free throws that have been the big difference in the game, where Ball State's hitting 94 percent and Northern Illinois um, hitting 75 percent. Turnovers, Northern Illinois 14, Ball State 11. The points off turnovers, Ball State has scored 16 times off of those 14 turnovers. The Huskies have scored just 10 times off of Ball State's 11 turnovers. Three-point field goal percentage for Ball State, 33 percent. The Huskies. 0 for 3 from three-point range in the first half. 42-31 is our halftime score. Glad you could join us today on the Ball State Sports Network. Coming up after our game here, the men's team will play Western Michigan, so we invite you to come out for that. And for more from the Ball State locker room at halftime, let's go back to Reed Druck, who's joined by assistant coach Marsha Freeze. Thanks, Chris. I'm here with assistant coach Marsha Freeze. Kind of a slow start in the first half, but the offense finally kicked in. Your thoughts on the first half, coach? I think we did some nice things in the first half. A big key for us was pushing the tempo. Northern Illinois, as you can tell, plays that suffocating half-court defense. And it was important for us to push the tempo as much as possible, and I think we did, did that at times in the first half. So far this season, Ball State is undefeated at home. What is it about this building that the ladies like? I think it just brings us a lot of confidence. You know, you're sleeping in your own beds at night. You're into a routine going to class. And today with the doubleheader, we've got a nice crowd here today. And there's a lot of people here who haven't seen our team play. And we wanted to show them something tonight and maybe get them back for some of our games. I know Coach Oldfield was a little upset that Northern Illinois got back into the game. What needs to be done to preserve this win in the second half? I think we had a little spell there where we got a little bit tentative. I mean, we did a great job getting in the bonus very early in the first half. And then we started going back on our heels a little bit. We need to just keep attacking in the second half and trying to get back to the foul line. Well, thanks a lot, Coach, and good luck in the second half. Back to you guys. Thanks, Reed, and thanks, Coach Freeze. And some interesting comments from Marsha Freeze. The tentativeness in the first half when they built that 18-point 8 8 lead for Ball State kind of went back on their heels a little bit and allowed Northern Illinois back in the game a little bit. Yeah, I don't think that you saw um, Ball State really pushing the tempo offensively to Northern Illinois. You know, in early in the game, Shayla was really taking the ball inside, drawing a lot of fouls. Tomorrow did the same thing. And then they started to be a little complacent, like she mentioned, and they weren't necessarily, you know, taking advantage Whoa, of the openings go. that the defense was giving them. Reed talked about playing in Muncie with last Thursday's Mid-American Conference win over Marshall here in Muncie. The Cardinals improved to 5-0 at home, marking the best start since the 1979-1980 team went 5-0 in Muncie. However, no team, Ball State team, has ever went 6-0 at home. The Cardinals looking for their sixth straight win in Muncie today. You look at the screen there and the Cardinals are on quite a roll overall winning six games and it started with a big win over Cleveland State back in December and look at the amount that the Cardinals have won by in those six games. You know that's one thing that Ball State is very um, deadly at and that's with you know putting a lot of points on the board because they have a lot of players who are you know offensively minded and are capable of making those shots. Ball State has posted 10 victories by 12 or more points including seven wins by 23 or more points in the last six wins, they've won by an average of 27 points. This is an offensive team, and they look to get back on track as the second half starts here in Worthen Arena. And that's the way to do it as Shayla Crook drains a three-pointer from the right-hand side, and it's 45-31. You know, and that's one thing Ball State may want to look to do, and that's to start to take some shots from the outside, because right now, Northern Illinois is just trying to keep them from penetrating. The crowd back involved as the start of the second half is upon us. Shattuck gets the start for the Huskies after coming off the bench in the first half. She misses, and Ball State has the rebound. Quickly up the floor, like we saw in the first half. The three-point shooters are around the perimeter. Crook inside the buoy. She'll work on Johnson. Turn, and she is fouled. And that's the third foul on Johnson, and that's early here in the first half. So if Tamara, you know, is really being heads up, she might as well just go ahead and keep taking it to Johnson on the inside and get her in foul trouble. 11 points and five rebounds for Tamara Bowie in the first half. She was seven of eight from the free throw line. She's back at the charity stripe to open the second half. 
make her eight for nine from the free throw line. You hear so much how important the first five minutes and the last five minutes are of every half. The Cardinals did not end the first half in that five minute stretch very well. However, they've started the first five minutes here on a good note. Yes, they have. And they always say it's going to make or break you on how you come out, you know, the second half and start the game. Wednesday at Western Michigan, Ball State trailed 38-34, but they used an impressive 21-2 run to open the second half and really take control, push their lead to 20 points, and it never left that for the remainder of the half. Well, and they scored 60-some-odd points, too, in the second half, which is a great offensive effort for Ball State. The rebound from Ryder, and the Cardinals push it up the floor again. The Marsh scoreboard has Ball State on top, 47-31. Shayla Crook uses the body but misses, and Kanaki with the rebound. Good move down low from number 34, Mystique Adams. Northern Illinois is really looking for that high low on offense. Bad pass from Shayla Crook. Some miscommunication from the Cardinals, and it's a turnover for Ball State. The Huskies have it, trailing 47-33. Seacrest over Bowie, misses, and Crook with the rebound. Quickly ahead, loose ball on the floor. It's a jump ball, and Northern Illinois will have possession. Ginny, as a former point guard, you believe that maybe Shayla's trying to do too much with the dribble at this point? Well, right now, she's looking to really push the ball up the court, which is, you know, what Ball State has done offensively throughout the game. But I think she is dribbling a little bit too much. They need to get more ball movement, quicker passes, and someone's going to be open. So the Huskies will set up the offense. The number two defensive team in the MAC, Northern Illinois, against the number one offensive team, Ball State. Right now, Ball State went to a zone defensively, but they got to make sure they get out on the shooters that Northern Illinois has out along the perimeter. That was boating for the Huskies, getting her first two points of the game. And cutting the Cardinal lead to 47-35 on the Marsh scoreboard. Shayla Crook, jumper outside the lane, rebounded by Boating. Careless pass from the Huskies, and Zerker picks up the loose ball. Over to Fuller, who's checked in for two. Good move from Amy Fuller. Coaches want the Cardinals to be active on defense. Be aggressive. Make the Northern team do, you know, do something with the ball. Just don't let them set up and be complacent in their offense. Sheila Crook with the rejection on Kanaki. But the Huskies have the ball. Knocked away from Fuller, and Shayla comes up with it. Forty-nine, thirty-five. Ball State leads in the second half. Fuller finds Kitts, who will fire the three. I believe Kanaki may have got a hand on it. But Kitts with the offensive rebound for two. She did a good job of following her shot when she knew it was a little short, and she got the offensive rebound and went back up and scored. And just like that, the lead has grown to 51-35, and Northern Illinois coach Carol Hamley calls for time. Let's check in with Reed Druck. It looks like tomorrow Bowie rolled her ankle a little bit in the first half. She's had it retaped and will play in the second half. Back to you, Chris. So we'll watch the developments of Tamara Bowie, but knowing her and how much of a competitor she is, I'm not sure that will affect her much. No, she's I still don't. in there for the Cardinals here. Yeah, she's too much of a competitor. She wants to get out there and play and be part of this you know, team and, and do everything she can to help pull off a victory here today. We talked about the national exposure that the Ball State women's basketball team has received just this week alone. 
Trisha Blackmar, who is a senior writer for Sports Illustrated, posted a column on the CNN SI website about Ball State and their impressive start. Sportsforwomen.com has a feature on Ball State women's basketball. And starting Monday, the Cardinals will receive national attention for the remainder of the basketball season on ESPN.com, as Amy Zerker and Tamara Bowie will provide weekly diaries to that national website. So the nation is taking notice of Ball State basketball. And that's great. I mean, you know, that can do nothing but help build the program and get the, you know, Ball State name out there and, and you know, get some other recruits that can help continue to, to build what they've started already here at Ball State. 51-37, Ball State on top. The Huskies have the ball. Shattuck looks down low to Youngblood for two. And we saw that in the first half. That high-low works again for Northern. Northern Illinois has done a good job of doing that high-low. Um, they get the ball up top. They're real patient. If they don't see anything down low, they penetrate off the dribble. Amy Zerker, on the other hand, turns around, comes back, and, you know, scores two to, to tie things, or not tie things up, but to match um, what they did the other end. Zerker, that's her first field goal of the game to go along with four rebounds three assists, numerous floor burns from the, the hustle plays from Amy Zerker. We don't keep track of those statistically, though. <laughs> no. Zerker again, starting to feel it. She finds her partner, Kitts, for two more. The Zerker-Kitts connection works again, and Ball State leads on the Marsh scoreboard, 55-39. Voting misses the rebound. Good hustle from Jonna Goff. And right now, Ball State's making Northern take some shots from the outside, which they haven't done here today, and they're not connecting. They're doing a good job of, of uh, denying that high-low. Goff finds Ryder. She can hit the three. This time, it's no good, and Youngblood with the rebound. Huskies working around the perimeter. Davis to Shattuck. Over to Sechrist. Back to Shattuck, the give and go. Down low, blocked by Amy Fuller, and Zerker with the rebound. Jonna Goss called for the turnover. Yeah, I think she knew what she wanted to do with the ball, but she hesitated a little bit and then palmed the ball and turned it over. Timeout on the floor on the Marsh scoreboard. It's Ball State 55, Northern Illinois 39 on the Ball State Sports Network. A good look at Worthen Arena as several fans are packed in the stands today for Ball State women's basketball. And that is so exciting to see that the Cardinals are being supported by the fans in the community. And there's no better team that deserves that support than this 11-3 Ball State women's basketball team. No, they're doing a good job of, um, you know, getting their presence known here in the community. And I think it's great to see a lot of people coming out and supporting the team. Looks like Tamara Bowie will be whistled for a hand check Tomorrow trying to guard Bowie Michelle Johnson. It's a second foul on Bowie. Huskies have it out of bounds under their own basket right side. Pass sails out of bounds from Kanaki. 
And Ball State will have it. Fifty-five thirty-nine, nearing the 13-minute mark in the first half. Bowie spins and scores. 15 and points for Tamara Bowie. And that's what Tamara has to do. They put Michelle Johnson back in for Northern Illinois, and she's got 3,000. Tamara needs to be aggressive and take it to her every time on the inside. Johnson finds herself open. She'll try the bank, but it's not open. No, a little hard off the glass. Good move from Jessica Knoll down low. Rebounded by the Huskies, and now Northern will set up the offense. Trying to cut into the 57-39 Cardinal lead. Adams, no good. Knocked around, good hustle from Jessica Knoll, the freshman. Golf ahead to Kitts. Lori Kitts using every bit of her body, but misses the shot, and the Huskies have the rebound. 57-39 now, 12 minutes to play in the second half. Knocked away, Bowie to Goff. And a questionable call, perhaps. Yeah. Cardinals hoping that there was a foul called. Instead, they call Goff for the turnover. Either a foul or, you know, Northern could have hit the ball out of her hands, and that may not have, you know, been a double dribble there, but. Regardless, the Huskies have it. Monique Davis now working on golf. Seacrest is working on Zerker. Thought about the shot, finds Johnson. Johnson works and scores. No, it's a rebound from Tamara Bowie. A good look from Johnson, but it wouldn't fall. Both teams are picking up their defensive pressure right now. Not only they're getting in your face, but they're using their hands an awful lot to swat at the ball. And you can see where Ball State's doing that at the other end, too. And that's what prevented the high-low. Timeout on the floor. The Cardinals have that big lead in the second half on the Ball State Sports Network. This broadcast of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by the Hoosier Lottery, proud sponsors of Ball State Basketball. Fun is good. Marsh Supermarkets. At Marsh, we value you. And by Sagamore Health Network. Care it's what your health care plan should be. You see the Cardinals, the scoring machine. Three Cardinals in double figures. Bowie with 15, Kitts with 10, and Crook with 10. The balanced offensive attack of this Ball State Cardinals, and that's one reason why they are among the top 10 in the nation in scoring offense, and they lead the Mid-American Conference in scoring, averaging 83.4 points per game. Goff works, spins. It's blocked by Johnson, and the Huskies have it. I think Johnna Goff maybe forgot that she was working on a little bit bigger player that time. Yeah, a little bit of a size mismatch there. But you can see where Ball State's doing a good job here defensively to kind of cut off that high low because they're getting a hand in front of that grill and preventing you know, the pass to come down low. Amy Zerker rips down the rebound and Ball State has it. Over to Kitts, down low to Bowie. She'll work inside, rebounded by Jessica Knoll. Golf for three. Misses again, Zerker has it. We've got some bodies flying on the floor. Bowie and Zerker both go down hard. Zerker, though, just wiping it off and going to stay in the game. That's the type of player she is. We'll get a chance to see what happened, perhaps. Going hard. Youngblood is there. Bowie inside. She's hammered by Michelle Johnson. And that's four on Michelle Johnson, so she's going to be, I'm sure, sitting Michelle on the bench Johnson here. 
And you see Shattuck getting ready to report into the lineup. Tomorrow, Bowie shooting two. As Michelle Johnson gets four fouls. Bowie back at the free throw line. 10 for 11, the sophomore from the free throw line today. This will be interesting to see how Northern um, adjusts to this because Michelle's going to have to sit on the bench for you know half of the the, re the remainder of the game unless you know Coach um, Hammerly thinks that you know she can afford to put her in early. Bowie hits both from the free throw line, increasing her 82% effort from the line for the season with today's 11 for 12 performance. Boating works on Noel, loose ball, Kitts has it. And here comes the superstar golf. Mini Miss Basketball from last year in the state of Indiana, runner up for Miss Basketball. Here you go. Here you go, Red. Here you go. Your I think that right. foul was on Tamara. Your ball right here. Three foul on Tamara Bowie. The ball state is her third. Now that is the third foul on Tamara Bowie. So as Johnson heads to the sidelines for Northern with four, Bowie will head to the sidelines for Ball State with three. 17 points and six rebounds for Bowie. Jessica Ryder will replace Tamara in the, in the lineup, and the Huskies have it. We're approaching the midway point in the second half. The Cardinals have the 20-point lead, 59-39. And the Huskies throw it out of bounds. Yeah, right now it looks like Northern Illinois is just trying to make something happen that's not there because Ball State's playing such a good contained defense. Ball State looking to push their lead over 20 points. Jessica Knoll inside, Crook works on Smith, misses, and it's out of bounds to Northern. Fifty-nine, thirty-nine is our score. The Cardinals in control in the second half. Shattuck will work on the freshman. Lori Kitts. Grabs her third rebound of the game. Freshman, Jonna Goff, finds Shayla Crook. Off the glass for two. And it's a 22-point lead, 39 for the Huskies, 61 for Ball State. Jonna Goff with the foul for the cards is her first, and she's third. Looks like they called a hand-checking foul there up top on golf. Um, you know, this is one thing that Ball State needs to do is remain, you know, being aggressive. They, they can't let up like they did in the first half. This is where it's going to, you know, take them to the next level with other competition if they can maintain that aggressiveness in the second half. Good defense from Shayla Crook, but it's knocked out of bounds. Last touched by Shayla. Looks like they called a foul on Shayla. Shayla Crook with a foul for the Cards. It's her first and team's fourth. Northern Illinois just 39 points on the board here in the second half. They're only averaging 59 points a game. Seacrest will get them closer to that 59 with the three. Amy Fuller connects for her seventh point of the game. Down low, 63-42 now. Kanaki down low for Youngblood, who broke free from the Ball State defense for two. It looks like there was a miscommunication, because I think that they went from a zone to a man-to-man, -man, but not everybody was sure on who they were guarding. And unfortunately, the person who wasn't being guarded got the ball and turned around and scored. I think that's why Brenda Oldfield has whistled for the 30-second timeout, to make sure that they know defensively who each other has, and not to allow Northern to break free like they did there. Exactly. 8.46 left in the second half. Ball State on top of the Huskies, 63 to 44, looking for their 12th win of the season. The Ball State Sports Network would like to thank uh, all of our affiliates who are televising today's game. I want to also remind you that we have some upcoming games that you can watch on the Ball State Sports Network. January 17th, Ball State men's basketball at Toledo. The 20th, the Cardinals are at Bowling Green, and the 30th, 
The Kent Golden Flashes come to town to face the Ball State Cardinals. You can see all of those games on the Ball State Sports Network with Vince Welch and Jerry Pearson. John Agoff misses, and the rebound controlled by Smith. There's Youngblood from the corner. Good. They're still doing a good job of doing the high-low, even though they're not getting a pass inside to the low. The low post is coming up high and getting the ball and connecting on that, you know, 10, 15-footer. Knocked out of bounds by the Cardinals. So the Huskies will have it. Lori Kitson, Tamara Bowie returns. Lori Kitson, Tamara Bowie back into the Ball State lineup. Again, Bowie with 17, Kitts with 10, Shayla Crook has 12. Three players in double figures for Ball State. For the Huskies, Youngblood has 17 and Johnson has 10. Eight minutes to play here in the second half. Ball State looking for their 12th win of the season, their seventh win in a row, and their sixth win in a row in Muncie. Youngblood called for three seconds. There's a timeout on the floor. 63-46, the Cardinals are on top on the Ball State Sports Network. This portion of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by Outfitter, offering custom screen printing and embroidery, showcasing businesses, organizations, clubs, and special events. Outfitter, we print what you wear. You wear what we print. You see the scoreboard in the second half, Ball State 63, Northern Illinois 46, the Cardinals in control in the second half, paced by the 17 points and six rebounds of double zero, Tamara Bowie. Tamara's doing a really good job of, um, you know, being on both ends of the court, you know, rebounding as well as um, putting the, the basket through the, the bucket. Huskies break from their timeout as Coach Carol Hammerley hopes to get something going here and cut into this Ball State lead to make a game of it in the final seven minutes. But we'll see what happens as the Cardinals have possession. Bowie, good move from the sophomore, just rattles out of the rim. It's controlled by Northern, but Lori Kitts comes up with it. Loose ball on the floor, and the Huskies have it. That was good hustle on both teams there. Kanaki cut off by Crook. Now Sechrist. Youngblood on four. The three. Is no good. Offensive rebound by Youngblood. Extra steps, but it's not called. And the basket is good. You're laughing, but was there extra steps? No, there was. She, when she spins, she, she took an extra step. But, you know, it was just a good, strong move on her part. This is the Ball State Sports <laughs> Network. We can do that, you know. The shot is good, and it'll send Youngblood to the free throw line. The leading scorer for the Huskies, 19 points for Youngblood, but misses the free throw, and the Cardinals have it on the Marsh scoreboard, 63-48. Crook splits the defense to find Bowie. Shot rattles around, and it's rebounded by Adams. Up.
Under seven minutes to play now. Jump ball, the Huskies will have it as Bowie dives for the loose ball. Seacrest is there as well. Shattuck back in the lineup for Northern Illinois. Only has four points and three rebounds, but has been a factor offensively and defensively for Northern. I think you heard the official say that that's a hold on number 31, Amy Zerker. So that is Zerker's second foul. Good look inside as she blows the layup, Kanaki. You could not get any opener than that. No, and I think maybe that's what threw her off there, was she was too wide open. Zerker works on Kanaki. There's Kitts for three. Misses. Rebounded by Kanaki. Maybe she hopes she can find herself that open again on this trip. Credit Shayla Crook for the steal on that play. She gets closer to Jenny Eckert's record in assists and steals. Well, I don't know if we can give that to Shayla or if we should give that to Reeder since she's the one who picked it up. Maybe we should give that to her instead of Shayla. <laughs> I think it goes to the person who knocks it away, Jenny. <laughs> She's closing in. I know she is. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel her breathing right now. Zerker has it left side of the Cardinals basket. Inside the crook. On the floor, the possession arrow will stay with Ball State. Right now, both teams are still being really aggressive defensively, even though Northern's down by quite a few points. You know, they're not giving up, and they're still trying um, to get back into the contest. There's still four, five minutes and 44 seconds left. 63-48, Ball State on top. Zerker will try it again. Down low to Bowie, who's bumped by Youngblood, and the ball will retain Ball State's possession. And it looks like Coach um, Hammerly for Northern Illinois has taken a chance and put Johnson back in on that last rotation. Good defense again from Northern Illinois. Forces Zerker to call a timeout on the floor. The Cardinals will try to set something up. It's a full timeout for the Ball State Cardinals. 63-48, Ball State on top of Northern Illinois. Three players in double figures for Ball State. 17 for Bowie, 12 for Crook. Lori Kitts with 10. But then you look at the other players, balanced offense, Jessica Ryder with eight, Amy Four with seven. Questions or comments, you can email us at the Ball State Sports Network, hoops at bsu.edu. Send your thoughts, questions for the coaches, the players, our broadcast team, our production crew, Jenny Eckert. You can email us at hoops at bsu.edu. Good look at the fans in Worthen Arena today. And as a former player, Jenny, I know we've mentioned this before, but it truly is exciting to see such support for this team. You know, it really is because not only are you excited about playing on your home court, but when you have a fan base there to help support you, it just helps get the momentum going, the enthusiasm going, and it helps get your adrenaline going when you're a player out on the floor. Of course, the Ball State men's basketball team is probably a little over a half hour away from tipping off with Western Michigan. It's a doubleheader day in Muncie as the youngsters enjoy it. It's Ball State basketball wall to wall from one to about four or five o'clock this afternoon. Tim Buckley and his men's team, they're in action next. So if you're watching this game and you can see it, you can still make it for the men's game coming up in about a half hour. Crook from Bowie and she is fouled. And we'll see who it goes against. If it's Johnson, it she's gone. If it's Adams, it's foul number two. Because that's one thing I hope that Brenda was talking to him about in the timeout was the fact that Johnson does have four fouls. And Tamara should just get the ball, go inside, and, and try to get that fifth foul on her as quickly as she can. Back to the free throw line is Tamara Bowie, 11 of 12 today. Bowie again, looking for 20 points. She's within one now with 19. 13 of 14 from the free throw line for the sophomore. She tried to
tried to step through the defense, but she took one too many steps. The first person to cheer on that play was Amy Zerker firing her team up for the remainder five and a half minutes. Good defensive pressure from Ball State. Now the Cardinals will work on the offense. Zerker guarded by Bodie. Now Crook. Shot clock at 10. Kitts for three. And Lori Kitts connects for her first three-pointer today. Loose ball on the floor, the Huskies have it. But they throw it away. Jennifer Youngblood returns for the order. We mentioned Tamara Bowie, 13 made free throws in 14 attempts. The 13 made free throws tie the fifth most in Ball State history by a single player in a game. And with five and a half, four and a half minutes left, Bowie may add to those numbers from the free throw line yet today. Zerker works on Kanaki, finds herself in trouble. Good, strong move from the sophomore. And it's out of bounds to Ball State. You have to admire the hard work, the effort that Amy Zerker brings to this team. Yep, she didn't give up. Once she got inside and she had nowhere to go with it, she just kept her composure and, and she tried to find something. Bowie splits the defense and is fouled. Jennifer Youngblood with the foul for Northern. Her Fouls on Youngblood, number 15 for Northern Illinois. Bowie back to the free throw line. She hits the first. That is now the second most free throws made by a Ball State player in school history. If this one goes, she ties the Ball State record, and she does. 15 free throws for Tamara Bowie. That ties a Ball State school record today. Kanaki. The three is way off base, but the offensive rebound is there for Youngblood. 69-50 on the Marsh scoreboard. Ball State three minutes and 50-some seconds away from remaining undefeated in the Mid-American Conference. Good luck from Zerker to Ryder for two. Neither team is giving up. They're both still pressing full court, and they're both still really taking the ball to the basket offensively. That pushes the, another Cardinal into double figures. Jessica Ryder now with 10 points, four players in double figures. And that's what you, you know, you like to see on a team is balanced scoring. And you know, there you got Tamara leading the way with 21 points. 71-50 on the Marsh scoreboard. And the Ball State Cardinals are three minutes and 37 seconds away from improving to 12 and three overall. Four and zero in the Mid-American Conference and they will win their seventh game in a row and set a school record for six straight wins in Muncie. For more information on Ball State Athletics, you can log on to the school's official, official website, bsu.edu slash sports. We have video highlights, player bios, coaches bios, notebooks, team pages, statistics, everything you want to know about Ball State sports is online at bsu.edu slash sports. Johnson works inside. Bowie with the rebound. Zerker works the perimeter. How about another one from Kitts? Oh my, Lori Kitts out of the corner for three. That's what you like to see. You like to see your shooter spotting up on the outside. Then you got someone like Amy Zerker drawing the defense and, and getting it to the person who she needed to. A great performance from the Boston women's basketball team has this crowd energized inside Worthen Arena. Johnson open again, misses, rebounded by Northern. Another offensive rebound by Kanaki. Still on the floor. And Zerker says, let's end this, I'll get the rebound. And she does. 
But the Huskies get it again, and Bodie for two. And for 74-52 on the Marsh scoreboard. Ball State rolling in the second half. Cardinals looking for their eighth win by 23 or more points in 15 tries. Michelle Johnson with the foul for Northern. Michelle Johnson picks up foul number five, so that will send her to the sidelines for the remainder of the game. Johnson fouls out, four of 15 from the floor, six rebounds, four assists, and 10 points. An impressive number as you're looking at your stat sheet because the Cardinals held her scoreless in the second half. You're absolutely right. That's what I was looking at. I knew that she didn't score um, when she came in off the bench there uh, from sitting down with four fouls, but she didn't score anything in the second half. Sends Amy Zerker to the free throw line. Then on the other hand, Youngblood did step up her game and she scored so far um, 12 points in the second half. So that's where the scoring has come from for Northern Illinois. Steve Adams in for Northern. Zerker, one of several Cardinals, shooting better than 70% from the free throw line. She'll have a, a chance for a couple more here. Number one is no good. A couple of substitutions for the Huskies. Number 25, Monique Davis back in. Stephanie Smith also in for Coach Carol Hammerly. Zerker hits number two. And we have a timeout on the floor. Ball State leads the Huskies 75-52 on the Ball State Sports Network. This broadcast of Ball State Basketball is sponsored by Bank One. All of your financial needs wrapped up in one. Cardinal Varsity Club, helping Ball State student athletes excel both in and out of the classroom. And by Ball State University. It's everything you need. The Cardinals have added to the double figure scores as Jessica Ryder has entered the double figure category with 10 points. Look at that balance for the Ball State Cardinals. And you wonder why they lead the MAC in offensive scoring as a team. 75-52. Some other women's scores of note today. At Bowling Green, it's the Falcons leading Toledo 55-45. Marshall over Western Michigan 68-56. In the first half, Kent State has a 28-7 lead over Akron. And Miami at the half leading Central Michigan 47-33. Some other scores from around the Mid-American Conference today in women's basketball. In Muncie, it's the Cardinals leading 75-54. Letitia Tucker into the Ball State lineup. Goff to Kitts, but she misses the layup. I guess she needs to be outside of the three-point line before she can make a basket. The three, no good as Melanie Post also in. A pair of seniors for Ball State, 33, Melanie Post, 52, Letitia Tucker seeing action today. Cardinals will have it out of bounds, left side of the Huskies basket. A minute and a half left in the game, Ball State on top, 75-54. Melanie Post and Letitia Tucker in for the Cardinals. 
perhaps what's shaping up to be a special season for the women's basketball team continues today with an impressive victory over Northern Illinois. As Post adds to the score. The three from Seacrest, rebounded by Goff. Final minute of action. Ball State 77, Northern Illinois 54. We're also just minutes away from the tip of the Ball State men's basketball game here in Worthen Arena. Cardinals and the Broncos of Western Michigan. 77-54, you see Marsha Freeze and Brenda Oldfield on your screen. Shayla Crook back to the free throw line. We want to remind you that this telecast of Ball State basketball and the Ball State Sports Network is broadcast under the rights granted by Ball State University and Northern Illinois University and is intended for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of Ball State, Northern Illinois, or the Ball State Sports Network is strictly prohibited. The Cardinals, 12-3 now overall. 4-0 in the Mid-American Conference. The seventh consecutive victory for Ball State. The school record for wins is eight in a row. Ball State will also win a school record sixth consecutive game in Muncie. And Jenny Eckert, despite all of those records, the most important thing is they got a big win in conference play. Yes, and that's exactly what's important right here is how they're doing in conference play. And, you know, they can't start off any better being 4-0. and And to be able to continue that, you know, throughout the season and build for, you know, tournament play, that's what this is all about. The Ball State faithful come to their feet in Worthen Arena to congratulate Brenda Oldfield's 12-3, 4-0 Ball State women's basketball team. An impressive effort again today for the Cardinals. In just a few minutes, our sideline guy, Reed Druck, he'll talk with head coach Brenda Oldfield and get her comments on today's game. The Cardinals were winners 78-54 over Northern Illinois. Tamara Bowie with 21 points and eight rebounds. Lori Kitts, 15 points. Shayla Crook had 13, and Jessica Ryder had 10 for Ball State. You see the final on your screen. Ball State 78, Northern Illinois 54. And for thoughts from the head coach, let's check in with Reed Druck and Brenda Oldfield. Guys? Well, Coach, seven in a row. This team's hot right now. Hey, they played a great game. I can't say enough about our kids. They, they played very, very well against a tough man-to-man -to -man defense, and it feels great. The last couple of games, Tamara Bowie and Shayla Crook have been awesome. Talk about their play and how they've brought this team to this level. They really have. They, they've just taken their game to another level this season for us, and much of our success is the reason because they've taken us on their back and can't say enough about the two of them leading this basketball team. On Wednesday, Ohio comes into a town for another Mid-American Conference showdown. What will they bring to the table? Another scrappy team. They're going to be a full court pressing team, uh, half court, full court. So we're really going to have to take care of the basketball and, and, and play fundamentally silent. Well, thanks a lot, Coach, and congratulations. Another big victory for Ball State, seven in a row. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Reed. Nice job. Congratulations to Brenda Oldfield, a class act, and she's got this program headed in the right direction. Cardinals win 78-54. We'll be back after this on the Ball State Sports Network.
You all right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. The Ball State women's basketball team improves to 12-3 and overall and remains in first place in the Mid-American Conference West Division with a 4-0 and record. Today, the Cardinals were victorious 78-54 over the Northern Illinois Huskies. Tamara Bowie with 21 points and 8 rebounds. Lori Kitts with 15 points. We'll have more of the first half action. Second half game for Ball State. Really, they came out and really played well, took control early in the second half, and really it was never a contest in the final final 20 minutes. You're absolutely right. They did a good job of preventing the high low that Northern Illinois was successful at in the first half. Johnson, we saw, you know, she remained scoreless in the second half, and that's because they got more in her face and, and kept her from actually getting the ball and being able to score down low. Excitement surrounds. Team will recap today's game and we'll look ahead after this. Ball State 78, Northern Illinois 54, the Cardinals winners today on the Ball State Sports Network.